is Dr. Angel Lee. She is a research fellow of the National Centre for Healthy Aging and Rehabilitation, Aging and Independent Living Research Centre at Monash University. She's a registered physiotherapist and her research interests are prevention of accidental falls in older adults, evidence based practice by health professionals, mobility care and physical activity participation for people with dementia, including the uh, culturally and linguistically diverse populations and interventions to support informal carers of the people with dementia. So Angel's just going to talk to us about um, some of her latest research and the effects of a six week training program for gait aid use in older people with dementia with balance impairments. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Um, hello, my name is Angel Lee. As Sue um, introduced me before, I am a, a physiotherapist, uh, but now working as a researcher in Monash University. Um, I think I would like to begin by acknowledging our country. So I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. OK, so this study that I'm going to talk about is a study funded by Dementia Australia uh, uh, for two years, and we completed this study last year. And the uh, study title is The Potential for Effects of a Six-Week Training Program for Gated Use in Older People with Dementia Who Have Balance Impairments. And I am the chief investigator for this study. Okay. Now, uh, people with dementia have a particular high risk of falls. So around 50% of people with Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia fall every year. And this can go up to 90% in people who have Lewy body dementia and Parkinson's dementia. And this is compared to around 30% in the general older population. Gaily prescription is a very common and standard practice uh, to improve walking stability and independence uh, for people with uh, balance or mobility impairments. However, there were several issues uh, that were identified in previous studies regarding gait aid use. Um, so one of them was that gait aids were not, are not always used correctly uh, by the gait aid users, and many are using, their gait, are using an incorrect type of gait aids. And in our recent survey, we found that around 40% of older people with dementia did not receive any advice from a health professionals about how to use the gate aid when they obtained their gate aids. So this could potentially lead to problems because lack of training in gate aid use may lead to improper use of gate aids and also leading to inadequate or poor gate patterns. And we know that uh, studies have shown that having an altered gait pattern, such as a reduced gait speed, shorter step length, short, slower cadence, and having higher gait variability, such as a step time or a stride time variability, were all associated with risk of future force. But it comes now to the question that uh, whether people with dementia can learn how to use a gate aid. There were different opinions whether they can uh, uh, learn how to use a gate aid, partly because of their capacity to learn new motor skills and also their ability to understand instructions. However, a systematic review of motor skill learning in people with Alzheimer's disease demonstrated that they can have implicit uh, intact implicit motor learning capacities, despite of having severe explicit memory impairment. However, so the important factors to consider uh, to facilitate the implicit motor learning capacity um, was to consider uh, running the practice, uh, the same mode, practicing the same motor task repeatedly. Uh, consideration for having a constant and consistent practice environment 
and also tailoring the practice session to the needs and uh, the ability of people with dementia. We find in a recent systematic review that despite of these learning considerations for people with dementia, that most studies of gated prescriptions for older people who have mobility or, or balance impairments, including those with dementia, had only implemented one single uh, gate aid instruction session or a very brief gate aid instruction session. So the aims um, of this study was to examine the potential effects of providing a gate aid and using an extended training program to teach safe and correct use of gate aids in people with dementia on the five outcomes. Uh, and these five outcomes are uh, spatial temporal gait outcomes, which are, you know, gait speed, uh, step length, etc. Uh, the outcomes on perceptions of safety and appropriateness of gait aid use in people with dementia, uh, success of achieving safe gait aid use, the adherence to gait aid use, and the outcomes on force. So for this study, we've used a, a pre and post single, uh, single pilot group design, and we recruited participants uh, who were aged 65 years or older that are living in Perth or Melbourne. They would uh, have a diagnosis of uh, dementia or uh, they have a cognitive impairment as indicated uh, by a RUDA score of 22 or less or they were receiving a dementia or cognition supplement in, the, in their home care package if they are receiving a home care package. Uh, they have to be unsteady when walking and turning, and they had, or they have had a fall in the last 12 months. And these people must be willing to learn how to, uh, learn how to use a gate aid and also, or if they require a more supportive type of gate aid that was different from the one they were currently using and have an informal carer who were able to uh, practice uh, safe gate aid use uh, with them. We exclude the people that who, can't, who could not walk or who required manual assistance for walking or those who plan to be away during the six week training program. So we employ six physiotherapists um, who are experienced in aged care to conduct the assessment and the training program. So all the physiotherapists attended uh, a three hour training session and they received a menu on the study protocol and also principles of motor skill learning to help participants achieve uh, implicit learning for uh, gated use. The study physiotherapist performed four home visits, uh, so scheduled at week one, two, three, and six uh, uh, over the six week time to train gate aid use. At week one, the physiotherapist discussed with the person and their carer about their mobility requirement, uh, preference of gate aid, uh, conduct uh, uh, some mobility assessment and then prescribed and provided the uh, gate aid to uh, the participants. And for each week, the physiotherapist uh, can personalize their, the training program to suit uh, the mobility requirements and the learning ability of each participant. And each training session was around 30 minutes in duration. Informal carers were required to observe the training session and to learn from the physiotherapist how to support safe gate aid use and then follow written instructions given by the physio at each home visit to supervise gate aid use uh, with the participant in between the physiotherapist's home visit. The training approach that we use to teach implicit, to achieve implicit learning of gated use for people with dementia was based on the concepts of errorless learning. So errorless learning is a learning paradigm which is based on the implicit learning principles of using high repetitions and low variability training sessions. And this uh, errorless learning has been used successfully to teach people with dementia to relearn uh, daily activities such as 
eating independently or using a mobile phone. The key elements of this errorless learning include repetitive hands-on tra um, training that relies on demonstration and imitation rather than verbal instruction to establish uh, proper and consistent use of gate technique. The training sessions were designed uh, to uh, uh, prevent or minimize inaccurate performance during the learning process. Uh, repetitive, uh, repetitive practice without errors to consolidate memory of correct performance uh, within their implicit memory system. And uh, this is the errorless learning is preferred over trial and error learning uh, because people with dementia cannot learn from errors. And this errorless learning uh, aims to reduce errors in performance, uh, which can reduce frustration and increase participation uh, among people with dementia. So for the assessment uh, at week one, um, the physiotherapist before the uh, gate aid training uh, collected uh, uh, data regarding demographics, uh, if the person have a formal diagnosis of dementia or not, their RUDA score, and uh, either the carer or the person reported their own uh, physical capacity. Mobility assessment will uh, carry out at week one, at week six, after the training uh, uh, session. And we use a four meter walk test. So for this test, we count the number of steps and measure the time used for walking a four meter distance to calculate the walking speed, step length and cadence. We've also used the time up and go test and also a walking of figure of eight uh, path test with and without a, a concurrent counting task. So for this counting task, we ask the participants to count backwards by one from 50 uh, whilst they were walking. For the perceptions rating of safety and appropriateness of gate aid use, uh, we asked the person and the carer and the physiotherapist to rate on a light card scale of one to five to three statements. Uh, so if the gate aid has improved the participant's steadiness in walking, if the gate aid has improved the participant's safety in walking, and whether using the gate aid is appropriate for the participant. So they can rate uh, from one to five whether they agree uh, with each one or not. Um, and this per perception rating will be uh, collected at each time, so week one, two, three, and six. And also regarding program success and the strategies that they, uh, the physiotherapists have used to train safe gate aid use at each time. Um, it was, uh, so the physiotherapists rated using their clinical judgment after each session uh, to rate whether the person have uh, demonstrated safe use of gate aid or not. So for this one, they can rate either it is a yes, no, or a partial, partial success. And they can select from a list of strategies that they have used to train safe gate aid use. So amongst these choices will constant pattern of practice, constant pattern of instruction, starting from simple environment and progress to more complex environment, or avoid concurrent dual tasking uh, during the training session. Uh, regarding the program success uh, to, uh, uh, to train safe gate aid use, so an overall judgment was made by the physiotherapist at the end of the weeks, uh, the six week program uh, to say whether the person have or have not demonstrated safe gate aid use, so a rating of yes or no. Regarding the adherence to uh, gate aid use and force, so the informal carers received a, a false diary as well as a home practice diary. And uh, regarding the home practice, uh, they recorded uh, their practice uh, against the physiotherapist instruction for each week. Um, and for, for the force and circumstances of force, they recorded using the false diary uh, during the six week time as well as for a further six weeks after the program has finished, uh, so up to week 12. 
Uh, we carry out a follow-up assessment after the program has finished at week 12. So at week 12, the physiotherapist call the participants to ask if they have continued to use the recommended gate aid or not. If they have completely stopped using it, then we, um, uh, the physiotherapist would uh, go to their home to collect the gate aid back from them. Otherwise, for the other participants, the physiotherapist conduct another home visit to redo all the mobility assessments again. So for data analysis, we have mainly used a uh, logistic regression analysis uh, to compare results uh, that were collected uh, uh, at week six compared to week one and at week 12 compared to week six. Uh, so this was done uh, looking at the spatial temporal uh, gate outcome measures. Uh, so the, the result that we got from the four meter walk test, uh, the time up and go test and the walking figure of eight path test. Um, the relationship between perception rating of safety and appropriateness of gated use was looked at at each week to see if there is a change over the weeks. Um, so we re regard the gate outcomes were better if the walking speed was higher, the step length was longer, cadence of walking was faster, and the time up and go test time uh, required was less. The ability to walk a curved path, as indicated by the figure of eight walk test, was regarded as uh, improved if the time taken was reduced. Path walking was accurate, so that means that the person don't deviate out to uh, more than 0 0.6 meter boundary from around the cones, so they can't walk too far away from the cones uh, when they walk uh, the figure of eight uh, path. So uh, it was regarded as uh, being improved if the walk and the concurrent counting task time taken was reduced or when they walk the path um, and counting together, um, the, the walking path was accurate. Uh, Carers adherence to uh, a gated, uh, supervision of gated use and force and the strategies used by physiotherapists were just described. So we had 24 uh, people and their carers participated and commenced the gate aid training program. 23 of them have diagnosed dementia. 42% were female. The average age was 82 years and their mean RUDA score was 16.5. So based on the cutoff score for RUDA score, we classify 11 as, as having mild dementia, 9 having moderate and four have severe dementia. And as you can see, the majority of the participants had difficulty moving inside and outside their home and have difficulty negotiating stairs. And 88% of them fell at least once in the last year. For the um, gate eight uh, training, we have provided to 63% of the participants a four-wheel frame, 25% uh, were provided with a single walking stick, 8% were provided with a combination of both, and 4% were provided with a two-wheeled frame. Uh, regarding the spatial temporal gate outcomes, uh, we found that there was a significant improvement at week six compared to week one when walking with the gate aid in walking speed, step length, and in their cadence. Uh, there was no, uh, no significant change uh, or improvement in the time up and go, and also the walking of uh, the figure of eight path with or without the counting task. Um, no significant improvement will uh, carry on onto uh, week 12 from week six. We found that for the perception of safety and appropriateness of gated use, study physiotherapists were more likely to agree that gated use has improved walking safety among older people with dementia with subsequent uh, training visits. 
And for the success of achieving safe gated use, uh, for the overall training program, we found that 88% were evaluated by the physiotherapist as being successful. And that included eight people with moderate and two with severe dementia. And there was only like 12% that were not successful. And as you can see then from the graph below, the blue line indicates people who were able to demonstrate safe gated use um, over the week. Uh, so from week one to week six, and we see that this line is increasing uh, uh, over, over the, the training visits during the week. The orange line indicates people who were able to demonstrate safe gated use, but only partially, and this line reduces over time. And uh, interestingly, people who were unable to demonstrate safe gated use, so as indicated in the gray line, so by the gray line, um, it has remained fairly constant from week one through to week six. In terms of adherence to gated use, so as per uh, the study physiotherapist instruction of uh, gated use, so during the six week training program, 42% fully adhere to the instruction, 54% had partial adherence, 3% had no adherence, and 1% had no home practice recommended. So because the physiotherapists think that uh, it was unsafe for the carer to practice uh, with the participant. Um, from, so after the training program finished, from week seven to week 12, 75% of uh, these particip participants use their gate partially, 20% use the recommended gate all the time, and 5% have discontinued using the gate aid. In regarding the outcome of force, over the six week training program, there were 15 falls that have occurred. Uh, only one person was using the gate aid when the fall happened. And from week seven to week 12, there were five falls and no one was using their gate aid when falls happened. Uh, in terms of the strategies that physiotherapists use to help uh, participants learn safe use of gate aid, um, the most commonly used strategies were starting with a simple environment and then changing to more complex environment. Uh, followed by using a constant pattern of practice, and then followed by uh, verbal cues and also other strategies. So the other strategies, the most commonly used other strategies will edu educating the carer uh, on how to support safe gated use, provide the participants with written user information, and teaching about the operation of handbrakes on the four-wheel walker, and also uh, 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 practicing and discussing about negotiating special environment or terrains. Um, so we can see that using a four week gated training program has resulted in benefits in improved walking speed, step length and cadence in people with dementia uh, using a gate aid. And we can see that 88% of the participants with dementia uh, can successfully achieve safe gated use uh, by the end of the six week program. And higher success were noticed in people uh, with mild or moderate dementia compared with people with severe dementia. Falls during and after the training program occur mostly when people were not using their gate aid. So this leads us to think that non use may lead to a higher proportion of falls amongst gate aid users. And partial adherence of gated use was the predominant mode of use during the six week training program and after the training program. Um, so based on the results, uh, it leads us to think about, you know, what strategies we can take to increase gated use amongst gated users for a higher proportion uh, of their time in their daily life. And also what situations that people with dementia need to use their gate aids. Um, however, uh, so our study's uh, result was promising, uh, but however, because it is 
from a small pilot study, we cannot really ascertain that the benefit uh, comes solely from our uh, six week training program. So future research, uh, what we would need to do is having a larger sample of uh, participant and having a control group designed to investigate the effects of gated training, uh, extended gated training program in, in people with dementia who have balance or mobility impairments. And also to monitor gated use and when force occur to determine what challenges are for uh, using gated in, in people's home. And uh, we have only used, uh, uh, for everybody, we have used a six week uh, gated training program with four sessions. Uh, however, the actual duration and the frequency may need to be adjusted according to uh, each person's need. Uh, um, so uh, that's something that we can think about uh, in future studies that may, some people may require more sessions and more time. Some people may require a little bit less. Um, so in conclusion, uh, we can see that there are potential for effects for some gate outcomes to improve using an extended gate aid training program for people with dementia. And we know that from this study that people with dementia can achieve safe gated use in a six week training program. And we see that higher success in achieving safe gated use uh, are noticed in people with mild or moderate dementia compared to people with severe dementia. Um, and the high level of force uh, uh, were observed when gate aids were not used. And it is important and it suggests that, um, that we need to explore why uh, people don't use their gate aid uh, and when and why these falls occurred. And there may be a need for us to develop a clinical guideline for gate aid use and recommendation for people with dementia who have balance and mobility impairments. So these are the uh, references that I've used to uh, uh, make my presentation and thank you for listening. Uh, but lastly, um, I want to uh, uh, alert people that um, I'm planning to do a gate aid training program study trial next year if I'm successful in a, a funding uh, round. Um, so if successful um, next year, I'll be conducting this trial. So if you or your group is uh, are interested in knowing about this study or have um, you know particip participants that you would like to recommend to 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 me that will be great uh, you can uh, contact me at my email address which is just angel.lee at monash.edu um, thank you very much for your listening thank you so much angel that was really really interesting so uh thank you thank you very much indeed um i think that you'll probably get a few people contacting you uh to discuss you know your next project uh it sounds as if uh be interesting to get involved so i'm certainly going to pass your details on to people who i know would be like to like to be involved so awesome um does anybody before I have a couple of questions, but does anybody else at this point in time have any questions that they'd like to ask? Or yes. any thoughts? Yes, me, Angel, Raja here, Angel. Yeah. Yeah, Angel, the slide 13, uh, out of 24 participants, 23 were diagnosed with dementia. Yeah. So what happened to the one patient who, what diagnosis did he have? Oh, she so, so, so this person didn't have a formal diagnosis of dementia. However, they this person had a cognitive score of 22 or lower in, in the RUDAS test. So we included this person. So not everyone has to have dementia in our study. Um, they can either have a low RUDAS score or receiving a home care a dementia supplement in their home care, which most likely indicate they have dementia. But yeah, you know that you know a lot of people with dementia are not keen to get their uh, diagnosis. So, um, yeah, but but yeah, but twenty of them, twenty three of them did have a formal diagnosis in our study. 
OKE DAN